Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, yes, and you know what? As you can see, I don't know if you can see it there. We've got the trailer, we're going camping. And I say we, but I'm the only one in here. Yeah, I'm uh, solo right now, but that's okay because, you know, sometimes you have to improvise. Work gets in the way sometimes, and school, if you've got kids and stuff like that, and just different plans get in the way, but sometimes you just have to improvise and find a way to go camping. And this is the May 2-4 long weekend here in Canada. I'm leaving early. That's why I've got the trailer. It's all packed up and everything. The kids are in school. Uh, the wife is still working. They're going to come up afterwards in the evening. We had a nice warm fire and it was great. You don't need an axe. You can just use a mallet or a hammer or something. And all you do is you... Ontario Parks, you, do you really need to put it here? Okay, let me tell you the reason why I'm leaving early. Well, you know what? It's supposed to rain. The weather, it's, you know, it's the May 2-4 weekend. And anyone that knows that goes away for the May 2-4 weekend, especially camping, knows that Traditionally, it's never the best weekend in terms of weather, or it's never predictable. I mean, Southern Ontario or Northern Ontario, it's still never predictable the weather. So it can be rainy, it can be cold, it can be, I mean, I remember some long weekends, it's actually <laughs> been snowing some uh, May 2 for long weekends. So you know what? This one's just supposed to rain tonight. I wanted to get up there before the rain started so we can I can set up and put up a tarp and stuff like that so we can, you know, improvise and you know make the best of it a little bit of rain shouldn't stop you i don't like to see the people that cancel camping because of bad weather or even just rain i mean to each their own but i find that it's just a, a waste of a, a good outing a good weekend and stuff like that just for a little bit of rain have we done it in the past yeah we've done it in the past but i don't like doing it so that's why i'm going up early we've uh, changed our plans we've improvised and uh I'm gonna go set up get the tarp all set up so we can you know at least have a fire tonight in the dry we won't be <laughs> pouring in the pouring rain and soaking wet and stuff like that so hopefully it's a good weekend come with us we'll uh we'll make the best of it you know we we're you know the outdoor canucks we'll make the best of it Sorry, so I didn't tell you guys where we are. We are at Inver Huron Provincial Park. We've never been here before. This is the first. Like we've been to, I think, almost every provincial park on Lake Huron except for Inver Huron. So this is a good first for us. Maybe it's a first for you guys. Come along. Let's check it out. Okay. The only problem with <laughs> coming here by yourself and without anyone is when you're backing in. <laughs> like we have to back into here. Let me just show you that. And uh, not that bad, but. It's a little tricky by yourself. At least when you have a spotter, someone to uh, talk to you on your phone or a walkie-talkie, it always helps. So we're going to do this by myself, or I'm going to do this by myself, and uh, you're going to watch the magic or the tragedy. I was on a plane to California. I had all the time I'd ever need. Did you even know I was looking for you? I was hiding in between How long, how long, how long did you wait for Not bad, not bad. I can go back a little further. Okay, so the whole reason I wanted to get up here early before the rain started is so I could put the tarp up so we can enjoy fires and being outside. We don't have to be cooped up inside the trailer. And uh, we were able to get the tarp up thanks to my buddy Dan. And uh, it should encompass all of us. It's a little dark under here. I'll come under and show it to you, but it's a little dark. Just goes over the awning a little bit. And uh, it can fit easily 10 people or so. 
so there you go it was uh i didn't show you how to set it up and all stuff like that because it was a little bit of an ordeal you have to put it to trees and you have to get up there as you can see how high that tree is, is about 20 feet up or that rope probably 20 25 feet but there you go now we can stay out of the rain and still enjoy the camping okay so i got one of these wood splitters for christmas a buddy of mine that we go camping with jay he had one of these because he's got like a uh like a real fireplace at home so he gets like uh, firewood and everything over the winter and he uses this to chop it now if you don't know what this is simply it's like cast iron i don't know what it is it's heavy as hell maybe even lead it's got a little blade right in the center here and it's got a little uh opening here where you can just put your logs into this is already split a little bit and you don't need an axe you can just use a mallet or a hammer or something and all you do is you push it down hammer it down that's the inaugural hit and the inaugural chop and you can make little pieces here you can make kindling you can make uh, anything you like uh, just cut them into smaller pieces if you want like uh, quarters if you like I'm just using this because I don't have a mallet but. and the good thing is you can sharpen this blade if you like you don't need to I mean just a few It'll be easier, obviously, but the sheer force is enough to actually split it. Usually only takes two or three chops and it's good. There you go. Now we've got some kindling here. That's simple. Oh, that must suck. Someone's just coming now as it's torrentially downpouring here and uh, they've got to set up in the rain. This is what I wanted to avoid. But you can't always, if you avoid it, you avoid it. If you don't and you have to, so be it. They'll, they'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, and just like that, it is sunny and uh, the rain's all gone. Well, really not just like that because what I didn't film, what I didn't tell you is we had a second day of, you know, cloudy rain in the evening, uh, misty, um, just not the greatest of days yesterday. So that was basically a day and a half. So you know what we did? I mean, we made the best of it. Uh, all these small little Northern Ontario places where parks are, like all the little towns and everything, they are a little gem in Ontario sometimes. And you get into these little towns, you get to see what the town's all about, how different people live and stuff like that. Not that it's drastically different or anything like that, but it's different enough that you, it's an experience. Okay, two things. First thing, we're in Kincardine here, and uh, here on Queen Street, Right there, there's a place called Rolly's Ice Cream. It's not really rolled anymore. Yeah, I'll show you a picture. It's not really rolled anymore, but there's a picture of it. I'll show you what it used to be rolled. And then as we sit outside, because it's nice weather on Queen Street, we're sitting on these nice little bear chairs in Kincardine. You realize the sign. I mean, I saw the sign, and it says free Wi-Fi downtown. So if you really need it, you can just get free Wi-Fi. Thanks, downtown Kincardin. So that's what we did. We went into town here. We went, um, there's Kincardin where we're next to here. And then um, opposite side, just east of there is um, Port Elgin. And we went to Port Elgin and uh, went around there, saw the sites. We actually went a little further east and we went into um, Southampton. And Southampton is a beautiful little town. But, but these are the things sometimes you have to deal with when you're camping and you know, like I said, not to dwell on it but you're not always going to have the best weather so you have to improvise i mean these people over here you can't see them maybe i'll zoom in if you can uh those people there they were tent camping there's a lot of people here in the provincial park this weekend that are uh, tent camping and you know what if they can do it us spoiled people in our travel trailers or our hybrids or pop-ups and stuff like that if they could if these tenters can do it then we can do it i mean it's it's all what you want to make of it i mean if you want to uh, cancel it and you just want a fair weather camp sure by all means go ahead but if you want to get out there and uh, get into nature you know part of nature is is the elements and raining and cold and yesterday it was it went down to like three degrees 
uh, at night, but we had a nice warm fire and it was great. Some of the kids and some of the uh, people stayed inside and played cards in, in the trailer. And that's the beauty of, of having that ability to do, to do that. And uh, other people stayed outside by the campfire and just, you know, you choose your own. Whatever you do, just get out there. And I strive that a lot on this channel. Outdoor Canucks, just get out there. The other thing about, you know, going camping when it's raining and stuff like that, or when you're thinking it's gonna rain, be prepared. I mean, being prepared for any kind of camp trip is key in general, but be prepared in terms of like, if, especially if you have kids, you always have to entertain them. So be prepared, like bring board games if you have to, bring some kind of games or bring some kind of itinerary where you plan ahead in terms of scout scout out what's around the area uh, around the provincial park or, or the campsite that you're going to like if like a, for example we looked for the um little towns and stuff like that, but see if there's like flea markets on uh if there's places that that you can go to entertain the kids like if there's amusement parks or something nearby and stuff like that so do that kind of stuff that in the event that it's going to be raining you have a backup plan that you don't have to just you can take take a, a little break away from camping and you don't have to just sit there and wait for the rain to stop because that's the worst thing you can do is just sit there and wait and look at your phone and look at the weather and wait for the rain to stop because that, that's just torture so find something to do when the rain stops it'll stop and then you can get back to camping so this is a uh, Inver Huron's dog beach apparently all the dogs are now down on this beach. So this is Inver Huron's beach, which is in conjunction with a dog beach or just portion of it here is a dog beach maybe up there is more of the just a public beach for for the rest of <laughs> the rest of people um it's the beginning of the season so it needs to be cleaned up a little bit from the winter but it looks like a decent beach as far as i see on the map i don't see any other beach here so as of now i'm gonna say this is the only beach So, like many other provincial parks, Inver Huron has hiking trails, as you can see, like a trail that we just came out of here, and this one goes all the way around Lake Huron, around the shoreline. It just hugs the shoreline. Sometimes it comes out like it is coming out here, just right on the shoreline, and then other times it's like, like it is in there, it's just about 5 or 10 feet or 20 feet away from the shoreline. This is pretty cool. And the uh, trail continues. And then when you're on the trail sometimes, you just look up here and some people have some prime sites here. That site is, what, about 30 feet right from the beach and the trail. I mean, times like this when there's a lot of people on the trail, it could be uh, not a private setting, but if you don't care about that, it's a nice view to have. So we veered off the trail a little bit and we ended up here and they're, they're coming slowly but surely. The kids are coming through. How was your journey? So now that we have a, a good day of weather and everything, it's going to be like 18 to 20 degrees today. And uh, it's sunny. As you can see, I'll come out here. It was probably way too dark. As you can see how sunny it is, it's beautiful. Nice uh, hiking weather or biking weather and stuff like that. What I will say, what I, one thing I'll complain about, and uh, don't mean to uh, bring this video down or anything, but it needs to be addressed. And I've addressed this at a, a, a couple other videos at a couple other provincial parks. So here's a situation of our 
our site. It's you, you drive in like this, or you back in like this, and as you saw over there was the uh, campfire, and that's where you put your trailer. I mean, I guess you could drive straight in and leave the trailer here, and the back end of the trailer is there, but then your truck or your tow vehicle is stuck there because this is pretty narrow here between this tree and that bridge tree is pretty narrow to get out so your trailer would be blocking it and you'd have more space there but your trailer would be blocking it. so what i've seen majority of people if not a hundred percent of people they back in and like almost every travel trailer hybrid fifth wheel almost anything the electrical connection is either at the very back of the trailer or near the back on one of the sides but it's at least the last quarter of the trailer so you've got if you got like a 25 foot trailer like this situation i've got a 30 foot cord so i've got 30 feet because i've got to come from the back to here and then i've got an extension thankfully i've got a 50 foot extension and i use the extension but look even with the extension i have to use I have to go back down to an extension cord because I don't have enough to but now I have to use an extension cord and take it there and instead of now 30 amp I'm only using 15 amp with just a 110 outlet which is fine in this situation because there's Julie say hi Julie <laughs> uh, which is fine in this situation because it's it's mild out but if this was the dead of summer and we needed to use air AC and I know I know that's glamping not camping I know people are gonna <laughs> scream in the video as they as they watch this okay so you don't always have to use air conditioning but if you needed to use the air conditioning because you have it it's a, it's it's a creature comfort I get it if you had to use it uh, I'm not sure if you'd be able to use it with um just you know just a 15 amp to 110 so we're making do but uh, Ontario Provincial Parks there is a better way in my opinion. Why can't you, because I've seen it in other parks where it's deep down into the uh, woods here and equal distance between the two campsites. I get it, you want one pedestal to share two sites. I get that, you're not gonna make one dedicated for every site. I understand that, all provincial parks like that. But why not put it deeper into the woods here? Like, like right there. I mean, that would make a lot more sense. My rant is over. You're so soft, yes. <laughs> you're soft. Yes. <laughs> so it's dinner time. Show us what you have there, Tammy. I have I? asparagus and potatoes. Oh, why do you sound like that? I don't know. Why do you sound like that? Okay, and then we've got some Euro meat, as Jay calls it, from Costco. <laughs> we've got hot dogs for the kids. We've got some sausages. Darren, Chef Darren over there has some... What are you doing over there? I'm not a kid. I'm a Ribs. M&M's. Ribs. Uh, Swiss, Swiss chalet ribs. So there you have it. That is camping or RVing. How are you getting outdoors in the rain? And like I said, it, it's not only just camping. I mean, even if you have other stuff to do, like, I don't know if you saw, and if you're new to the channel, you probably haven't, saw our uh, Tobomori video where it rained quite a bit on that trip and we had uh, excursions booked and everything like that. So we didn't miss out on that. We went, it rained, we still had a great time. Would we probably had a better time if it wasn't raining? Yeah, probably, but we still had a great time. So. Get out there. I know I keep harping on this. I sound like a broken record, but get out there. Enjoy. We're just packing up now and cleaning stuff. And uh, as you can see, it's a little bit more because like the leveling blocks and stuff, they were still wet with rainwater. So you have to wipe it down with a rag and stuff. Like that. But other than that, it's uh, everything's the same. And of course, always the day you leave is always, I think out of all the camping trips we've done, uh, the day we left, only one time I think it was raining and we had to dump out and uh, empty our tanks in the rain. But every other time, it's bright and sunny and it's usually the best day of the week. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching folks. Comment down below if you have any tips or tricks or any different ideas about camping in the rain and uh, we'll discuss it down in the comments below. Take care, see ya, bye-bye. No longer he waits to further to the street all out. No, it's coming in closer, I think.